Nan Morrison. Thank you, everyone. I'm smiling not for the applause, but because I'm looking at real people in front of me, which is so wonderful. It's great to be back together in person. It was so much fun walking around at lunch, talking to everybody, finding out what people are doing next year. It was great. Somebody, one of the seniors is going to my alma mater. Alma mater, it does not mean that I'm favoring that team. Um, but I'm not a judge, so it doesn't matter. Um, I know you want to get started, so I'll be brief, but I need to say a few words about economics. Uh, this subject is key to translating your values, whatever most is most important to you, into reality for yourself and others you find a technical innovation to help solve climate change or an engineering pro solution to find a better water filtration system for your town or a marketing system to help rural communities around the world get their products to market. In all of these instances and so many others, you need economics. Whether you're finding your way forward just for yourself or for your family or your community or your nation, economics is the key that unlocks that big question, how? The world needs innovation, goodwill, and knowledge. Students, just like you, who are well-trained in many subjects, including our favorite, economics. Everyone here is cheering you on for today, for next year, if you are not going off to college, uh, but really for the rest of your lives to do well and prosper. And now, there is no better cheerleader that I can think of, uh, and our MC, the redoubtable NBC senior economics reporter, and good friend of CEs, Steve Leisman. Steve? You don't have that, you don't have that game show music I asked for. <laughs> da, 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 you know, something like a, a thing going. But uh, OK, we'll do without the game show stuff. Uh, it is great and, and a real honor to, to be here. Um, I, what number is this for me, Nan? Like, eighth or ninth or tenth? I don't know. But I've done this a lot of times. And here's what I can tell you. Everybody has, does better when they have more fun and they relax. I, I was a coach for baseball, and I used to go to the kid on the mound, and his lips, lips would be blue because he wasn't breathing. <laughs> so let's all breathe. Let's relax. Have some fun. This would be great. This would be right, right, right? They don't breathe. They don't have fun. I tell them, step out of the box and smile before you hit the ball, right? <laughs> so everybody smile. It's, 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 that's it. It's amazing what that can do. Okay. Thousands of teams across the country have co already competed a series of competitions, and a critical thinking round now, only four teams remain competing for the title of national champion. This final quiz ball round is with David, the David Ricardo division, which includes teams of students who have taken no more than one introductory economics course. You'd never know it, I'm sure. I'd like to introduce the judges for today's David Ricardo quiz ball. First, our lead judge, a former high school AP economics teacher and NEC coach who led multiple student teams to the national finals, as well as the president of Wounded Warrior of Ohana, Colonel Dick Rankin. Conferring judges, principal senior lecturer in economics at Vanderbilt University, Dr. Stephen Buckles. Good to see you again, Stephen. And executive director and Alpaw professor of economics at the University of Cincinnati, Dr. Julie He. Okay, thank you, judges, for your support and being here today. Now it's time to meet our David Ricardo final round teams.
Why do I want to talk? I don't know. Is it at the invisible hand? <laughs> Okay, hey, judges, what did you think of the econ jokes in there? Your ratings, please. Good. <laughs> Thumbs up. We got it from Stephen. Seven or ten. shaky. We'll work on that for next year. But anyway, this is the year we have. We're very excited. Uh, Dana School of Wellesley, would you, Massachusetts, would you please name your team spokesperson? CC. Do, do you guys need a name with that, or is it? Oh. Yeah. Oh, my name's CC. CC? Yeah. Okay. Um, and Mount Hebron High School of Ellicott City, Maryland. Who's your spokesperson? Oh, I'm Nandu. I'm the spokesperson. Okay. Phillips Exeter Academy of Exeter, New Hampshire. I'm Dhruv. All right. And St. John's School from Houston, Texas. I'm Oliver. All right. Cool. We've reviewed the rules with all the teams. So there, are there any questions on the rules? What Chris says goes. That's the only thing you got to know. <laughs> okay. Let's begin the final round of the David Ricardo Division. And congratulations, guys. Really, congratulations. It's great. Okay. Now let's do it. The final round of the David Ricardo Division of the 22nd Annual National Economic Challenge. Here's the question. First question. A country's labor force is 26,000, the number of unemployed is 2,000, and the labor force participation rate is 60%. What is the adult population of this country, aside from those living in institutions and in the military, and what is the unemployment rate? You have 20 seconds. Five seconds. Wait, guys, what is the and time? Dana Hall, may we have your answer, please? Um, the number, uh, the adult population is thirty thousand, and the uh, unemployment rate is uh, one thirteenth. Mount Hebron. Population is 26,000. Unemployment rate is 40%. Phillips Exeter. Unemployment rate is 113th. No answer for um, population. St. John's. Labor or population is 41,200 and unemployment rate is 113th. Unfortunately, uh, no one got that correct. The correct answer is 43,333 and 7.7% .7 or we would have given 8%. Right. Okay, moving on to the next one. That was a Before on. we do, Steve, before we do, just a reminder, oh. hold up your, keep your, your, your boards held up until the end. Back to you, Steve. Question Call that one a warm-up question. Move on to the next one. Get the next one right. Here we go. So next question, please. The liquidity preference theory is associated with what economist? 20 seconds. Five seconds. And time. Dana Hall, may I have your answer, please? John Keynes. Mount Hebron. Keynes. Phillips Exeter. John Maynard Keynes. St. John's. Keynes. Great. Everybody got that correct. The correct answer is John Maynard Keynes. That's the way to do it, guys. One's across the board, Steve. We can move on to question three. Thank you, Chris. Next question, please. Okay, you guys ready? If country A is experiencing high inflation relative to country B, what can we expect in terms of changes in the relative value of the two countries' currencies? 20 seconds. Five seconds. And time. Dana Hall, may I have your answer, please? Country A currency depreciates relative to country B. Mount Hebron. Country A depreciates relative compared to country B. Phillips Exeter. Country A depreciates to country B. Country B appreciates to country A. St. John. The relative value of country A decreases, and the relative value of country B's currency increases. 
That's correct. The correct answer is the country A's currency will depreciate. And all four of you correct. Okay, we are uh, tied at twos across the board. Steve, on to the next question. All right, let's have the next question here. Question four. Which type of unemployment would be most affected by an increase in workers' mobility? 20 seconds. Five seconds. And time. Dana Hall, may I have your answer, please? Frictional unemployment. Mount Hebron. Frictional unemployment. Phillips Exeter. Frictional unemployment. And St. John's. Frictional. The answer is frictional in all nice. four, correct. You guys are doing great. Okay, Steve, you can go on to the next question. We're tied at three. Question five. Who will bear the burden of a per unit tax if demand is more elastic than supply? 20 seconds. Timer. Consumers? Consumers? Yeah. Consumers. Five seconds. And time. In a hall, may have the answer? Suppliers. <laughs> Mount the Hebron. The supply side would bear the cost. Phillips Exeter. Producers or suppliers. And St. John's. Producers. And we accept producers, all four are correct. Suppliers, producers, correct. Wow. So we continue to remain tied at four. And teams, remember, if you, uh, if you do uh, get it early and you want to raise your hand and let us know, you're welcome to do so. Or what do you see? We're tied at four. Okay, here we go. Question six. All right. If we observe that the equilibrium price has increased and there's an indeterminate change in quantity, has demand or supply or both changed? And in what direction? 20 seconds from now. Five seconds. And time. Dana Hall, may I have your answer, please? Supply increases, demand decreases. Mount Hebron. They both uh, change, uh, demand increases, and supply decreases. Phillips Exeter. Demand shifts to the right, and supply shifts to the left. St. John's. Both of them change. Supply decreases and demand increases. Okay, the answer is supply decreased and demand increased, and all four are correct again. Wow. No, no, no. no. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mistake. I'm sorry. Um, Matt Hebron, Phillips Exeter, and St. John's are correct. My mistake. <laughs> Okay, so now we have uh, Mount Hebron, Phillips Exeter, and St. John's at five, Dana Hall at four. Steve, on to question seven. Question seven. A new home buyer hires a roofing company to inspect the roof on the new home before finalizing the deal. The roofing company finds that there are several issues that they recommend be addressed and say they can complete the work in a week. This situation could potentially be an example of what? 20 seconds. Five seconds. Time. Do you know how may have you answer? Economies of scale. Mount Hebron. Asymmetric information. Phillips Exeter. Adverse selection. And St. John's. Information inequality. Okay, I want to just check one thing.
The correct answer is moral hazard, and unfortunately, all four are correct. Incorrect. Okay, so the score remains the same with Mount Hebron, Phillips, Exeter, and St. John's at five, and Dana Hall at four. On to question number eight. Okay, here we go. Question number eight. Supersized Corporation pays its workers $10 an hour. The government forces Supersized to pay its workers $10.10 per hour, and in response, Supersized hires more workers. What kind of labor market is Supersized participating in? Five seconds. And time. Do you know how many of the answer? Monopsony. Perfect no. competition. A perfectly competitive labor market. Okay. Wait till I call on you. Okay. <laughs> Phillips Exeter? A monopsony. And St. John's? A monopsony. Okay. The correct answer is monopsony and Dana Hall, uh, Phillips Academy, and St. John's had it correct. Okay, so now St. John's and Phillips Exeter are on top at six with Mount Hebron and Dana Hall at five. On to question number nine. It's a tight, tight race. Here we go. Question nine. What U.S. program was put in place after World War II to stabilize Europe? 20 seconds. And five seconds. <coughs> and time. Dana Hall, may I have your answer? Marshall Plan. Mount Hebron. The Marshall Plan. Phillips Exeter. Marshall Plan. And St. John's. Marshall Plan. All four correct. The answer is Marshall Plan. <laughs> well done, teams. Phillips Exeter and St. John's at seven. Mount Hebron and Dana Hall at six. On to question number 10. Question number 10, please. Assume the loanable funds market in the U.S. and China are both in equilibrium. <clears throat> the U.S. at a real rate of 3% and China at a real interest rate of 7%. From a borrower's perspective, what will be the flow of financial capital between the two countries? What will be the effect on interest rates in the U.S.? 20 seconds. Of capital to China's out of China. Five seconds. And time. Yeah, Dana Hall, may I have your like answer, please? Flow to U.S. decreases and interest rate decreases. And Mount Hebron, may I have your answer? A flow of financial capital to China and the interest rate in U.S. increases. Can you see? What's happening to interest rate? This? Interest rate increases. Okay. Thank you. Phillips, Exeter? Flow into U.S. out of China. China rate decreases. U.S. rate increases. In St. John's? Uh, the flow is from China to the United States, and the interest rates in America decrease. Okay. In a hall. Hold on. You get that way. Can we see Dana Hall again? No. No, incorrect. And can we see St. John's once more? No. No, unfortunately, all four are correct. The answer is there will be an outflow of financial capital from the U.S. to China and a lowering of interest rates in the U.S. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Oh. Okay. Could you repeat that answer? You want to hear it again? Yeah. Sure. There will be an outflow of financial capital from the U.S. to China and a lowering of interest rates in the U.S. Uh, I think that's what you said. Flow to U.S. decreases. Flow to U.S. decreases. Oh, decrease? Yeah. Okay. 
It is correct. It's just the opposite of it. Yeah, take this away. Just one second, teams. Are you ready? Oh, the you. I read that backwards. I'm sorry, that's my bad. Judges, you ready? Yep. We're going to get credit to Dana Hall for that one. Thank sorry. you. Thank you. So only Dana Hall, correct? Only Dana Hall. Yeah, we just sort of said sort of negative. Okay, so that is just one point for Dana Hall, not, none for the others. So actually we have a three-way tie for first. Dana Hall, Phillips Exeter, St. John's at seven, Mount Hebron at six, <clears throat> on to 11. Question 11. What fiscal policy would result in a rightward move along a short run Phillips curve? 20 seconds. So it's increased taxes, decreased government spending. And five seconds. Time. Do you know how many have your answer, please? Government spending decreases and taxes increase. Or taxes increase. Mount Hebron, may I have your answer, please? It won't change the uh, the Phillips curve. Fiscal policy won't change the Phillips curve. Phillips Exeter, may I have your answer, please? Taxes increase, government spending decrease. And St. John's, may I have your answer, please? Less spending and higher taxes. Okay. Dana Hall is a yes. Phillips Exeter is a yes. St. John's is a yes. The answer is increase in taxes or a de decrease in government spending we would have also accepted contractionary or restrictive fiscal policy. Well done, teams. We are halfway through, take a breath, uh, with Dana Hall Mount, uh, at 8, Mount Hebron at 6, Philip Sexeter at 8, and St. John's at 8. Cool. On to question number 12. Steve. Okay, here we go, second half, after the beer commercials. <laughs> what type of trade barrier would benefit both domestic producers and domestic consumers. 20 seconds. Maximum import. Maximum trade barriers. Yeah, it is. Import maximum. Five seconds. <coughs> and time. Dana Hall, may I have your answer, please? Quotas. Mount Hebron. Import quotas. And Phillips Exeter? Import quota. And St. John's? Quota. Uh, unfortunately, the answer is a subsidy for domestic producers or domestic consumers. Unfortunately, everyone is incorrect. So the scores remain the same, and we are on to question 13. Okay. Here we go. Question 13, please. Okay, a consumer spends all her income buying three units of good A and six units of good B. The third unit of good A increases total utility from 50 to 60, and the sixth unit of good B increases total utility from 20 to 30. If the price of good A is $5 and the price of good B is $2, what should this consumer do to maximize utility? 20 seconds. Timer. 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 Here we go. Five seconds. 
and time. I'm glad you guys had a extra time with that question. Dana Hall, may I have your answer, please? Um, they should buy more good B or buy less of good A. Mount Hebron, may I have your answer, please? Buy more of good B. Phillips Exeter? Buy more of good B. And St. John? Buy more of good B. And the answer is buy more units of good B. All are correct. Dana Hall, nine, Philip Sexeter, nine, St. John's, nine, Mount Hebron, seven, on to question number 14. Here we go. Question 14, please. Using the same resources, farmers can grow popcorn and sweet corn. Assuming the markets for both popcorn and sweet corn are competitive and the price of popcorn increases, what will happen to the equilibrium price and quantity of sweet corn in the next growing season? 20 seconds. Increase and decrease. Price will increase. Price will increase. Okay. Five seconds. And time. Dana Hall, may I have your answer, please? Price increases and quantity decreases. And Mount Haber, may I have your answer, please? Price increases, quantity decreases. And Phillips Exeter, may I have your answer, please? Both price and quantity increase. And St. John, may I have your answer, please? Both decrease. Can you look at, look at Mount Hebron's answer? Both decrease. decrease. That's why I'm pointing it out. And that's the answer that you go with is the answer that's on the paper. paper. Good job. St. John's, hold your, hold your. Oh, sorry. Both down. Price. Both down. No, that's wrong. Price down, quantity down. So we got one here. Okay. Dana Hall is correct. The answer is price will increase and quantity will decrease. And we have a leader. Dana Hall with 10. Phillips Exeter, St. John's, 9. Mount Hebron, 7. On to question 15. All right, question 15, please. Assume that the economy is operating in the intermediate range of the aggregate supply curve and that there's an increase in net exports. What will happen to the price level, output, and the unemployment rate? 20 seconds. Five seconds. Time. In a home, may I have your answer, please? Price level increases, output increases, and unemployment decreases. Mount Hebron, may I have your answer, please? Price level increases, output increases, unemployment decreases. Phillips Exeter, may I have your answer, please? Price level increases, output increases, unemployment decreases. And St. John's, may I have your answer, please? Price level increases, output increases, and unemployment decreases. Oh, All four are correct. The answer is price level and output increases, unemployment <laughs> Dana Hall, 11. Phillips Exeter, and, excuse me, Phillips Exeter and St. John's, 10. Mount Hebron, 8. We are on to question number 16. Here we go. Question 16, please. Assume that a perfectly competitive firm is in long-run equilibrium and it's producing 200 units. Its average variable cost is $20, and its total fixed cost is $2,000. What is the firm's marginal cost? 20 seconds. Timer. Timer. Yeah, we good? Good. Because variable cost and marginal cost average marginal cost is 20. There's 200 units. No. Five, Five seconds. It might be six. Okay. Time. Dana Hall, may I have your answer, please? $20. Mount Hebron, may I have your answer, please? $30. Phillips Exeter, may I have your answer, please? $4,000. And St. John's, may I have your answer? $30. Please? 30, sorry. That's 30? Yeah. Three. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Mount Hebron and St. John's are correct. The answer is $30. So we're back to a tie for the lead with Dana Hall and St. John's at 11, Phillips Exeter 10, Mount Hebron 9. On to question 17. Okay, next question, please. Probably in the fourth quarter here. An economist uses the name of what tool that can be purchased at a hardware store to describe a situation when prices tend to be sticky in the downward direction? 20 seconds. Five seconds. And time. In a home, I have your answer, please. Sticky wages. And <clears throat> Mount Hebron, may I have your answer, please? It was a ratchet. And Phillips, may I have your wrench? And St. John's, may I have your answer, please? Widget. Okay. Um, Mount Hebron is correct. Phillips, Ex Exeter is correct. The answer is ratchet or wrench. That's cool. Dana Hall, Phillips Exeter, and St. John's all are at 11. Mount Hebron just one behind at 10. Steve, on to question okay, no uh, 18. 22 questions total, right, Chris? Chris, it's 22 questions? So, all right. Here we go. Question 18, please. Giving workers a raise would not affect what cost curve? 20 seconds. Five seconds. And time. Do you know how many of you answer, please? Average fixed cost. The Mount fixed, Hebron? The fixed cost curve. And Phillips Exeter? Average fixed cost. And St. John's? Fixed cost curves. Okay, the answer is fixed cost or average fixed cost. All four teams are, are correct. Dana Hall, Philip Sexeter, St. John's, all at 12, Mount Hebron, close on their tail at 11. On to question number 19. Here we go. If the central bank makes a large bond purchase, what would be the effect on the value of the currency on the foreign exchange, and why? 20 seconds. Five seconds. And time. In a home, have your answer, please. Um, the it, the, curren up, the currency depreciates because an increase in money supply causes the nominal interest rate to decrease. And Mount Hebron, may I have your answer, please? Uh, the currency would depreciate on the foreign exchange market, and the interest rate. And that's because the interest rates go down. Uh, Phillips Exeter, please. The currency would depreciate because there would be a lower interest rate and a higher money supply. And St. John's, may you have your answer, please? The currency depreciates because an increase in the money supply depreciates it per the purchasing power parity theory. All four are correct. The answer is depreciate because interest rates decrease because of money Okay, 13, 13, 13 for Phillips Exeter, St. John's, and Dana Hall, Mount Hebron, 12. We are at question number 20. Here we go. Question 20, please. What is the difference between the discount rate and the federal funds rate? 20 seconds. <laughs> Five seconds. And time. Ian Hall, may I have your answer, please? The discount rate is the interest rate from the Federal Reserve to banks, and the federal funds rate is the interest rate between banks. 
Now, Hebron, may I have your answer, please? The discount rate is the interest rate to borrow from the Fed, and the federal funds rate is the interest rate to borrow from other banks. Phillips Exeter? The discount rate is the rate that the Fed charges banks, and the federal funds rate is the bank-to-bank -bank rate. In St. John's, may I have your answer, please? The discount rate is the rate that the Fed charges other banks, or sorry, that the Fed charges banks, and the federal funds rate is the rate that banks charge each other. All four correct. All four correct. This discount rate is, is paid by banks to the Fed, and the federal funds rate is paid banks to each other. Correct. Yes. Dana Hall, Philip Sexeter, St. John's continue to be uh, one ahead of Mount Hebron, 14 to 13. We have two. Two questions remaining. Two questions remaining. Here we go. Question 21. In what situation, in terms of both elasticities, would the buyer pay the full amount of a per unit excise tax? Timer. Supply and. Five seconds. And time. Dana Hall, may I have your answer, please? Uh, St. John's, you cannot write. The supply is perfectly elastic or the demand is perfectly inelastic? Mount Hepburn, may I have your answer, please? For the buyers, it's going to be perfectly inelastic, and for sellers, it's going to be perfectly elastic. Phillips, Exeter, please. The demand will be perfectly inelastic and the supply will be perfectly elastic. And St. John's School. Perfectly inelastic demand, perfectly elastic supply. Take it away. Okay. The answer is Demand is perfectly inelastic and supply has some elasticity. We're going to accept those answers, all four correct. Okay. Just give me a second to get it right here. Okay, we are down to the last question of uh, regulation time with three teams, uh, Philip Sexeter, St. John's, and Dane Hall, tied at 15 with Mount Hebron at 14. Uh, no okay. last question, Steve. Here we go, last question of the regular time. What economic principle is violated by the phrase, if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself? 20 seconds. <clears throat> and five seconds. And time. In a home, may I have your answer, please? Trade always benefits. Mount Hebron, may I have your answer, please? Specialization or comparative advantage. Phillips Exeter, may I have your answer, please? No such thing as a free lunch. And St. John's, may I have your answer, please? Specialization of labor. I guess. I guess. Correct. So, Mount Hebron is correct and St. John's is correct. The answer, comparative advantage or specialization is acceptable. So we have... Um, Dana Hall. Um, for trade, it's like basically uh, more advantage if it's from like another country, the nation, like trading between people, so that's like the principle behind trade is that comparative like advantage. Specialization of labor like it, um, benefits both sides. This is your this is your call. Just a little bit. What's written on the page? What's written on the page? Yeah, the audience. Yeah, we can't accept that one. That wasn't specific enough. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And therefore, 
After all of that, we have a winner. St. John's wow. School is our national champion. 16, 15, 15, 15. That was as tight and as well played as I remember any other contest. That was fun. That was amazing. So other teams, you're going to find out your scores when the awards are given out, or what you're ranking when the other when the awards are given out. So stay tight. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay.
folks, remember to turn your phones off, please. Everybody have their phones turned off. Okay. Are you waiting for me? Let's I'm get ready. this round. Hey, let's give a round of applause for everybody. This is an incredible achievement to be here. Thousands of competitors across the nation. These are the top teams across the country. Congratulations on Rock to Steve Leesman for the Adam Smith round. All right. Thank you, John. It's great. Great to see everybody here in our Adam Smith division. Uh, we're ready to go. Welcome all. This is the Adam Smith division, which includes teams of AP International Baccalaureate and honors high school students as well as any returning competitors. We're going to go live on CNBC in just a few minutes, so we're going to do some pausing and stuff like that. So let's uh, first meet everyone before we do this. Before we begin, I want to introduce the judges. The judge for today's final quiz bowl round, our lead judge is executive director and Al Paul Professor of Economics at the University of Cincinnati, Dr. Julie Heath. And our conferring judges are Principal Senior Lecturer in Economics at Vanderbilt University, Dr. Stephen Buckles, and <laughs> former high school AP economics teacher and NEC coach who led multiple student teams to the national finals, as well as president of Wounded Warrior, Warrior Ohana, Colonel Dick Rankin. <laughs> Thank you, judges, for your support, and obviously, and for being here today. Now it's time to meet our Adam Smith teams. Roll the video, please. Hi, I'm Ali Ocko. My name is Gabriel Banks. Hi, my name is Tyler Montalak. Hi, my name is Tyler Tata. We are Gilani School. Representing in uh, Adam. Division. And it's a beautiful day today in Hawaii. Look at that. The weather is really quite fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> We're from Troy, Michigan. Hi, I'm Clement Shoot, a junior, and our team is about to monopolize the competition. I'm Evan Pitch Rocket, a junior. Sometimes markets fail, today we will not fail. Hi, I'm BT Butterball. Well, the pick up competitors are fire takers. Today we will be taking over. I'm Simon Hyde, a junior at Troy High. We're from Chuck Dog and we're running multiple on ABC. Today we will shut down our competition. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Rohan Kapoor. I love econ because I find it interesting to understand how the money in the world is used. Hello, my name is Dr. Lokani. I love econ because of the applicability of its topic. Hi, I'm Clark Keaton. And I love econ because I love to learn how to do so in monetary policy. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Zach Clark, and I love economics because of my teacher in schools like Wall Hazard and Evan Sun. And we're the Harvard School! Hi, my name is Simon Malate, and it is my pleasure to introduce Team Maryland from Mount Everest High School. Hi, I'm Simon Sarkar. I love to be processed to the lost version of this background. I'm Sam Lehman, and I have been in the playground. Hi, my name is John Michaels. When it comes to competing in the National Academy Challenge, the initial part of the is to stop this environment. Great. Really nice. Okay, so uh, congratulations, obviously, to all the finalists. All team members are here and can confer with each other, but only the team spokesperson will give the final answers to the judges. Harker School, who's your spokesperson, please? Shazeb Lakani. Okay. Iulani School, Honolulu. Spokesperson. Gabriel Banks. Mount Hebron. Sonia Mahata. And Troy. Shri Bandi. Okay, we've reviewed the rules with all the teams, so there are, are there any questions? No? All good. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. In a few seconds, we're going to be teasing this competition live on CNBC. Then we're going to wait till they go to commercial break. And then we're going to come back and do the first couple questions live on television. So um, a good thing to do now would be everybody take a deep breath and relax and don't even think about any of this other stuff, except for all this time <laughs> you spent to prepare. Suddenly all the stress is gone. I didn't even see you breathe. <laughs> Come on, take a breath, man. I think it's the table, yeah. 
There we go. Everybody relax. Curl your thighs. When I, when I get nervous where I go on like, uh, like a thing, I, I curl my toes for 10 seconds really tight. That's what I do. If you want to do that too to relax, it works for me really well. Um, and it's a completely alcohol-free exercise, so it really works out <laughs> quite well for me because I think drinking and being on television are not good things to pair together. It's my personal opinion. Um, so everybody just, um, Jody, do you know how far out we are? Uh, we should be about two minutes. Two minutes out, so in... in Sorry, two minutes to the T's. Okay. Did they just start this interview that I'm listening to now? Uh, yeah, about, yeah. So they're probably longer than two minutes. Uh, they have it in for three total, so. Sorry? They should be getting you. The rundown still says 39 are getting you now. So it's about three and a half minutes. Okay. All right. I wish I could tell you what was going on here, but I've only heard pieces of it, so I'm not sure. <laughs> Steve, you should know that uh, some of these teams, some of these team members, they actually didn't go on vacation or delayed certain personal things to be here today. So there's a lot of sort of personal sacrifice that came here from some of these teammates. And Nan is, Nan is right that it's great to be here all in person and be able to do this. It's, much, it's a much better way to do things. I was, uh, okay, two minutes to the tease, and my camera is one of those two guys over there. Hey guys, when I'm done sort of wrapping up and throwing back, you can all applaud, okay? That's a little, uh, no, not for me, not for me. No, I'm sorry, I don't mean that at all. Well, you can applaud for me, that's okay, but that's not what I want you to applaud. Just make a little noise, what I mean. Does that work, Jody? Does that work if everybody applauds on the out part of the tease? Yeah, absolutely. That's when I'm done. <laughs> Chris, I would have gotten like eight on the last one, maybe oh. ten, oh, maybe yeah. ten. Yeah, it's sick. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. I don't get it. But I guess I didn't study enough economics. <laughs> I know I didn't. Steve, I'm going to show you, and then I'm going to show the, the teams after you start talking. Great, great. <clears throat> Um, Jody, am I going back to the anchor or choose to break? Okay. Thank you. Because I just fell off the turnip truck yesterday, didn't I? <laughs> I did. I just hit my head when I did it. That was the only thing. Don't you all love live television? <laughs> cool, thanks, Christina. Can stocks go up even if American money supply goes down? Barry Knapp is here on that. He's also got not six, but seven key themes he's looking at right now. Plus, it's the economics version of the National Spelling Bee. It is happening right now in New York City. And who better to host it? Steve Leisman, who's there with the excitement building. Steve. 
Yeah, Sully, we're about to start the Adam Smith division of the National Economic Challenge. Uh, we have teams competing from all over the country. When we come back, you are not going to believe how smart these kids are. They're smarter than you. They're smarter than all of you. They're smarter than I am. This is an unbelievable competition. Back in just a few minutes. students entered the National Economics Challenge this year to battle it out for the top spot. Steve Leisman is hosting the event and he is standing by live to kick off the national competition. Final, Steve, take it away. Brian, thanks very much. We're about to begin the Council of Economic Education's competition for the Adam Smith Division. This is the advanced division. These kids are not just smart. They're like Bernanke smart is the way I'd put it. Uh, left standing to compete today after a really brutal series of elimination rounds are the Harker School from San Jose, California, Iolani School from Honolulu, Hawaii, Mount Hebron School from Ellicott City, Maryland, and finally, Troy High School from Troy, Michigan. You guys are all winners to get this far, but only one school takes home the coveted crown of the biggest bunch of economic geeks in the country. Here we go. Yeah. Now you know. Let's play. Here we go. Question number one, please. What economic term describes slow growth, rising prices, and rising unemployment? And what would be the best open market operation to reduce the inflation? I want to know the answer to this. 20 seconds. To reduce the inflation? And five seconds now. And time. Harker School, what is your answer, please? Stagflation and sell bonds. Yolani School. Stagflation, sell bonds. Mount Hebron. Stagflation and sell bonds. Troy. Stagflation, sell bonds. That is the correct answer. Everyone's got it correct this time. All right. Chris? Okay, we're tied at ones across the board going into question two. Over to you, Steve. I think Powell's listening, so let's put in what, he, what he's doing, right? Okay, here we go. Question number two. Consider a profit maximizing natural monopolist producing in the relevant range. What are the possible values for average total cost if marginal cost is $20? 20 seconds. 
Yeah. And five seconds to go. Time. Harker School, what is your answer, please? Less than 20. Iolani School? Less than $20. Mount Hebron? Less than $20. Troy? Less than $20. All right. The correct answer is any value greater than twenty dollars. So unfortunately, no one got that one correct. <laughs> and so we say at ones across the board. Going into question three, Steve. Okay, question three. Everybody tied at one. This will be of twenty-two questions. If marginal cost is rising as output increases, they all got it right in the first one. They all missed it. You know, you kind of look under the do one of these type of things. Anyway, if you want to continue watching the National Economics Challenge on your second screen. Go to youtube.com slash CNBC television and be sure to tune into Power Lunch coming up in the next hour. We're going to hear from the winners themselves. Soon they are winners. This could go on for months. That'll be around 2.45 p.m. Eastern time. All right, coming up. Your next guest says, do not believe. Time. Harker School, what is your answer, please? Decreasing. Iolani School. Decreasing. Mount Hebron. Decreasing. And Troy. Diminishing. Variations on a theme. Everyone got that correct. <laughs> Two's all around. Over back to you, Steve, for you see a question a theme four. developing here, Chris. I do. Here we go. Question four, please. What is the twin deficits hypothesis? 20 seconds. Timer. Like, like deficit in um, deficit in current account. Deficit. Current account equals current account equals CFA. CFA equals CFA. CFA equals CFA. Like CFA equals CFA. Budget deficit. And five seconds. And that's time. Mark is down. Harker School, your answer, please. A budget deficit would lead to a trade deficit. Iolani School. The current account equals the financial account. Mount Hebron. Trade deficit leads to more likely budget deficit. Troy. Current account equals financial account. Please hold your, your boards up. Thank you. Keep your boards up. The correct answer is a growing budget deficit causes a growing trade deficit. So the Harker School got it correct. <laughs> Harker three, Iolani, Mount Hebron, and Troy, all two, on to question number five. Question five, please. What organization publishes the Beige Book and how often is it published? 20 seconds. And five seconds. Time. Harker School, your answer, please. The Federal Bank in quarterly. Iolani School. Standard and Poor's annually. Mount Hebron. Federal Reserve annually. And Troy High School. Federal Reserve Quarterly. I'm sorry. The correct answer is the Federal Reserve. So that part's correct, but it's published eight times a year. Oh. oh. <laughs> Don't I know it? <laughs> 
score stays the same with Harker in the lead by one with three points. Others at two. Steve, over to you for the next question. Okay. Um, uh, d before we go, David, just FYI, I've got the IFB off. I doubt they want to talk to me, but just they can't. Okay, thanks. To Jody. <clears throat> to our CNBC crew in the back there, by the way. Yay. Takes a small battalion to make this happen, not a village. Okay, next question, please. If China lowered the value of the renminbi, Sirtaris Paribus, what would be the impact on employment in Japan, a major trading partner? 20 seconds. Exports in Japan. Five seconds. And time. Harker School, your answer, please. Decrease. Iolani School. Employment will go down. Mount Hebron. Decreases. And Troy High School. Decreases. Everyone got that correct? Harker four, Iolani, Mount Hebron, and uh, Troy, all three, on to question seven. Question seven, please. If inflation is 2% annually, God willing, and your, <laughs> I added that, and your nominal income is rising at 6% annually, approximately how long would it take for your real income to double? 20 seconds. I got it, I got it, I got it, sure. Five seconds. And time. Harker School, your answer, please. 18 years. Iolani School. 17 and a half years. Mount Hebron School. 18 years. And Troy. 18 years. The really correct answer is 17 and a half years, but we also accept 18. So everyone got that correct. Thank you. Harker five, Iolani, Mount Hebron, and Troy four, on to question number eight. Okay, question eight, please. What is the name for currency that fluctuates widely, is in, unconvertible into other currencies, and is expected to depreciate? 20 seconds. And time. Harker School, your answer, please. Soft currency. Iolani School. Junk currency. <laughs> Mount Hebron. Bad money. <laughs> Troy High School. Cryptocurrency. <laughs> <laughs> Fluctuates widely, unconvertible. <laughs> I wish we could give style points, <laughs> but soft currency is correct. <laughs> Harker Har School. Yes, Harker now has six with Iolani, Mount Hebron, and Troy all at four on to question number nine. Okay, question nine. Assume that the central bank has sold government bonds on the open market. How will this transaction be shown in the short-run Phillips curve model? 20 seconds. Yeah, no, move to the left. Oh, yeah, yeah, to the right. Decrease the right. Right along. Five seconds. And time. Harker School, your answer, please. Is a movement rightward along the curve? Iolani School. 
movement along the short run Phillips curve to the right? Mount Hebron. Movement along short run curve? To the right. To the right. Sorry, it says move right <laughs> up there. <laughs> Troy. Uh, moves right along the curve. Everyone is correct. Perfect. Harker 5, our other competitors, Yolani, Mount Hebron, and Troy all have, I'm sorry, Harker 7, our other competitors have 5. Excuse me, Steve, back to you. All good, Chris. Here we go. Question 10, please. What is the term to describe when monetary policy becomes ineffective such that cutting the interest rate to zero would not stimulate the economy? 20 seconds. Five seconds. And time. All right, Harker School. Liquidity trap. Iolani. Liquidity trap. Mount Hebron. Liquidity trap. And Troy. Liquidity trap. Everybody got that one. Parker maintains a two-point lead uh, with eight. Uh, Troy, Mount Hebron, Iolani at six. On to question 11. I was just uh, thinking how much of these kids' lives have been at the zero lower bound. <laughs> I mean, what are they, 16, 18 years old? It's really quite remarkable. There will be a time you'll live in a world of positive interest rates, but just not yet. <laughs> <laughs> question, right, Colonel? <laughs> question 11. Consider this quote. When the federal government announces that it intends to increase government spending, people will expect inflation and will immediately build inflationary premiums into interest rates, wage demands, prices, etc., and the price level will rise. To which school of economic thought does that quote belong? 20 seconds. I'm not. I think it, I'm pretty sure. I, I'm pretty sure the answer is going to be like class. It's what? It might be new class. I'm not sure. And five seconds. And time. Okay, Harker School, your answer, please. Keynesian. Iolani School. Rational expectations. Mount Hebron. Rational expectations. Troy. Classical. We would have accepted three answers on this one, rational expectations, adaptive expectations, or new classical economics. So Iolani and Mount Hebron, you got it correct. It's gotten a little tighter. tighter. Harker eight, Iolani and Mount Hebron seven, Troy six. We are at the halfway point. On to question 12. Okay. No bathroom break at this halftime here. Here we go. If a tariff is placed on an imported good, what will be the impact on domestic consumer surplus, domestic producer surplus, and domestic net welfare? 20 seconds. Just right, producer. Five seconds. And time. Harker School, your answer, please. Domestic consumer surplus will decrease, producer surplus will increase, and domestic net welfare will decrease. Iolani School. The domestic consumer surplus will decrease, the producer surplus will increase, and the overall domestic net welfare will decrease. Mount Hebron. The domestic consumer surplus will decrease, the domestic, domestic producer surplus will increase, and domestic net welfare decreases. And Troy High School. Domestic consumer surplus decreases, domestic producer surplus increases, domestic net welfare increases. You guys are good. All right again. Or decreases. <laughs> Parker School 9, Iolani School 8, Mount Hebron High 8, Troy High School 7, on to question number 13. I know 100 senators who would get that question wrong. 
Question 13. If the cross price elasticity between two goods equals one tenth, what is the relationship between the two goods? 20 seconds. Yeah. Five seconds. And time. Parker School, what's your answer? Substitutes. Iolani School. They are substitutes. Mount Hebron. Substitute goods. Troy High School. Substitutes. They are indeed substitutes. Point for everyone, Harker 10, Iolani and Mount Hebron 9, and Troy 8, on to question 14. Here we go. Question 14, please. Oh, boy. A magazine is deciding whether to utilize workers or machines to place inserts into the next edition. Workers can add inserts at the rate of 100 per hour, while machines can add at the rate of 1,200 per hour. Workers are paid $10 per hour, while it costs $240 per hour for the machine. Assuming no other costs and that the magazine wants to minimize costs, how much will it cost per magazine to add the inserts? Timer. Five seconds. And time. All right, Harker School. Ten cents per magazine insert. Or per magazine. Iolani. Five dollars per insert or per magazine. <laughs> Mount Hebron. Ten cents. Troy. Five dollars. The answer is 10 cents. Harker and Mount Hebron both got that correct. Harker 11, Iolani 9, Mount Hebron 10, Troy 9. On to question 14. Troy, uh, Troy 8. Troy 8. Troy 8, excuse me, I didn't scroll down enough, my mistake. Sorry. Uh, on to the next question. I was only looking at that, I was about to draw to a flush, draw to a straight here, so. <laughs> That's good. Question 15, please. If the reserve requirement were 0 0.2 and the Fed buys $10 billion worth of bonds on the market from member banks, by how much will total reserves change? You're smart. No, because it's not there. It was originally zero and now Five seconds. Five seconds. Yeah. And that's time. Harker School. Ten billion dollars. Iolani. Increased by less than or equal to fifty billion dollars. Mount Hebron. Fifty billion. Troy. Fifty billion. The correct answer is 10 billion. So Harker School got that one correct. Okay, we're now at Harker 12, uh, Mount Hebron 10, Iolani 9, Troy 8, question 16. Question 16, please. Consider three different industries. In industry A, two firms each control 50% of the market. In industry B, firm one and firm two each control 20% of the market, and firm three controls 60% of the market. In industry C, firm one controls 90% and firm two controls 10%. Which industry has the highest Herfindahl index? Timer. Five seconds. And time. 
Parker School. Industry C. Iolani. Industry C. Mount Hebron. Industry C. And Troy. Industry C. Industry C is correct. Nice. Parker 13, Mount Hebron 11, Iolani 10, Troy 9, on to question 17. Question 17, well done by the way on that last one. Assume apples cost $2 and oranges cost $1. Lee usually buys five apples and 10 oranges. The fifth apple and the tenth orange each give Lee 40 units of utility. What should Lee do to maximize her utility? 20 seconds. Five seconds. And time. Parker School, your answer, please. Buy more oranges. Iolani School. Buy more oranges and buy less apples. Mount Hebron. Buy more oranges, less apples. Buy more oranges, less apples. Everybody got that one correct. Parker 14, Mount Hebron 12, Iolani 11, Troy 10, on to question 18. Who says you can't mix apples and oranges? Oh. Thank you very much. It's just as, my, just as my kids would do at that point in time. Question 18. According to the Fisher equation of exchange, if an increase in the money supply resulted in no change in nominal GDP, then what must have been true? 20 seconds. Yeah, oh, facts, facts. Yeah, you have time, you have time, just write it out. Five seconds. And time. Harker School, what's your answer? The real GDP decreased. Iolani School. The velocity of money decreased by the same proportion. Mount Hebron. Velocity decreases. And Troy. Velocity of money decreases. Velocity must have fallen is the correct answer. So Iolani, Mount Hebron, and Troy got that correct. Iolani, Mount Hebron, and Troy got that correct. We were overcome with applause. <laughs> OK. Okay. Harker 14, uh, Mount Hebron 13, Iolani 12, Troy 11, on to question 18. Question 19, right? Question 19, 19 excuse me. Thank you, Chris. If the marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.75 in a closed economy with no crowding out, by how much would aggregate spending increase if the government cut taxes by $4 billion? 20 seconds. Five seconds. And time. Harker School, your answer, please. Twelve billion dollar increase. Iolani School. Twelve billion dollar increase. Mount Hebron. $12 billion. Troy. $12 billion increase. And $12 billion it is. Okay, we have three questions remaining in regulation with Harker 15, Mount Hebron 14, Iolani 13, Troy 12. Over to you, Steve. Very close. Question 20, please. What was the original name of the World Bank? 20 seconds. Five seconds. Whatever. 
and time. Harker School, your answer please. Bretton Woods Institution. Iolani School. General Agreement on Trade and Tariffs. Mount Hebron. Human Development Organization. And Troy. International Monetary Fund. All great answers, none of them correct. <clears throat> the original name of the World Bank was the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Did you know that? No, but now I, I know either. why <laughs> when I was in Moscow, I covered the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development because it took its name from the World Bank. Look at that. There you go. New. Who knew? So no one got that one correct. So the scores stay the same. Harker 15, Mount Hebron 14, Iolani 13, Troy 12. On to question 21. Question 21, what does the acronym BRICS, pronounced BRICS, stand for? <laughs> or should I say B-R-I-C-S? <laughs> Five seconds. And time. Harker School, your answer, please. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Iolani School. Be ready, it's cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can't we give a point for that? <laughs> You're the Mount judge. Hebron. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Troy. Yeah, we don't have an answer. The correct answer is Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Harker and Mount Hebron got that correct. We are on the final question of regulation. Harker is up by one point, 16 to 15 over Mount Hebron, with Iolani at 13 and Troy at 12. On to our last question. Maybe Doesn't get more exciting than this on the last question here of regulation time. Question 22. Natural monopolies tend to develop when the market demand curve intersects the long-run average total cost curve where it is sloping up, horizontal, or sloping down. Five seconds. And time. Okay, Harker School. Sloping down. Violani. Sloping down. Mount Hebron. Sloping down. Troy. Horizontal. The answer is sloping down. So Harker, Iolani, and Mount Hebron. And we have a national champion for the Adam Smith Division. Congratulations to the Harker School. Um, let's do a very quick round of applause for the three other competitors. Troy, <laughs> Mount Hebron, Ulani. And now a special round of applause for our winners, the Harker School. Okay, and now I guess... And now uh, don't go anywhere. We're going to actually award, uh, do the awards for Adam Smith right now. Nan is coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Nan Morrison. Okay. John, John, I have a... You have a mic. I have a mic. Yes. Okay. No, I'm going to do the awards, so I need the, the names when you're ready. He's got the other one. He's got... I got, I got it. I got it. Okay, there you go. You're okay. all set. All right, sure. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm loud, right? So they can just turn me on? Or do you, okay. All right, folks. Uh, fourth place first. Oh, I just want to say thank you to everybody first. Hey, everyone. Just before I do the awards, I just wanted to say that yesterday we ran the National Personal Finance Challenge. That ended at 3 o'clock, and we immediately started the changeover to this competition. I want to give a big call out and thanks to the team from CEE, led by Rosanna Castillo. They've been working their toothlesses off all week. 
uh, really hard. Thank you so much. Uh, they just do an amazing job. I also want to thank John Palacio and his team from Now. We love working with them, and they are full of good advice and good cheer and just great work. And we are so indebted to the whole crew from CNBC, who's been working hard since late yesterday to make all of this happen, to get these live hits on CNBC with us. Uh, there's, there's a lot of effort that goes into it, and we are so grateful to have this opportunity with them, and of course with Steve, who's given so generously of his time for, for CE always for so many years. So thanks, big thanks to CNBC. And, and I kind of count my judges as part of us, because <laughs> we love you and we've worked with you for so many years, but thanks to the judges too. And so many of you came in from out of town just to do this. I'm from really out of town. <laughs> So it is my great honor and pleasure to start giving the awards out for the Adam Smith Division. In fourth place, we have Troy High School from Troy, Michigan. And they are Naveen Natarajan, Deep Agarwal, Shri Bendi, and Sonnet Chu. Congratulations. Congratulations. School. It's nice to see you guys back, although you're different people now. <laughs> Alia Cook, Tyler Matsuzaki, Gabriel Banks, and Kylie Tanaka. Congratulations. Place. You're here again, Mount Everett High School, although a different team of people. Congratulations. That would be Samuel Samuel Sumit Sarkar, Sonia <laughs> Mahati, and John Michaels. Congratulations. Somebody should hold that up high. Add it to the collection that Mount have on. Over here, over here. Thank you. And a big call out to our first place team, the Harker School. <laughs> From San Jose, California. And, and we actually have the head of our California Council here with us today, Denise Gutierrez. So Denise, why don't you come up and get in the picture with these folks too. Um, that would be Shazi Lakani, Rohan Krishna Takor, Harsh Deep, and Zachary Clark. Congratulations. And yes, the Yale is in the Somebody should give directions. And then, okay, and now what's going to happen is we're going to take these, these folks off, and the winning team should wait because you're going to be interviewed, and we're going to bring the David Ricardo teams back on to take the original place. Freeze for one second. Don't move. <laughs> Jody, when they come back on, they'll sit in that particular. Um, sequence so we'll know who's who when we have the banners up okay sorry guys I don't know that's a good question should we just say our names give it, should we say our names in order yeah say your names in order starting on the right oh, harsh deep harsh deep Rohan Krishna Takur Shazeb Lakani yeah, <laughs> when you come back, just do me a favor and sit in that order because my memory is not that great. <laughs> Stand it up. Cool. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
No, they like said stay. Man's gonna do it. No, no, that's yeah, it. Know, yeah, just gonna, man, they haven't know. done the awards of the pictures for the last one. I will. I don't know. Hold on a second. Let's get my phone. One second. Um, I think so, Davey. What do you think? The, can you get that? I think it's better to the stick mic, right? I'll, I'll do the stick mic. Make sure you can do that. Let me just get my... Um, Nan, give me one second. Xiang Yi Wang. And I want you guys, gals, to tell everybody that they should, all the women that you know, all the girls you know, that they should study economics because it's a good thing. And Steve, I have to correct you. We have a bunch of people who are just like Janet Yellen up here, not just like Bernanke and Powell. Let's look over here. Let's look over here. Okay. In third place, we have Anne Hebron High School. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. And that is Yushin, Samita Nagashwar, Hana Sok, and Nando Minaj Pillay. Did I get that right? Congratulations. More trophies for Mount Hebron. <laughs> Sorry. Over here, it's gone. And in second place, we have Phillips Exeter Academy. Vera Shrista, Oliver Lynn, An Ananya Das. Oh, oh. oh. That, that was oh. wrong. Zach Kembal. Oh, no. Oh, it's Zach Drew and Vera. Yeah. <laughs> I think might have gotten switched. They did. No, Ananya. <laughs> Zach Drew. Yeah, yeah. Vera's Phillips. Second. Phillips is second. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. okay. But the names, the names are, the names are in the wrong place. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, okay. yeah, going out there. But I do know this. I do know that that you're very welcome. I do know that uh, the economics what, classes what are an elective book, here, and they are oversubscribed. So um, that says a lot. You're very welcome. You. It's great to have you guys here. Okay, so I need to look at your name tags now because <laughs> so the first. First place team goes to St. John's School from Houston, Texas, and I will be in the great state of Texas tomorrow. Congratulations. And who, who, Oliver Lynn, Veer, no, Ananya, Harris, Ananya, Harris, and Duncan, Duncan, and Harris. Okay. So we got to work on this, guys. <laughs> anyway, but the most important thing is these are the people that actually are in first place. Oh. 
Great. Congratulations, everybody. This was a great competition. Thank you so much. All right, so St. John's and Harker School, please stand by. Everyone else, congratulations on a very amazing year. Well done, everybody. It's not the end of John's got wrong. You know what? The kids are happy. And they're fine. And they're fine. So Steve's going to come back and interview the... Loved your comment about Jennifer Yellow. Oh.
school students competing in the National Economics Challenge after a long competition. Steve Leisman standing by now with the winners. Steve. Yeah, Tyler, thanks. What a really exciting competition. Very close up until the very end. 22 questions. Unbelievable how smart these kids are. In fact, let me introduce the winning, the winners of the Adam Smith Division from Harker School, San Jose, California. Uh, we have to my left here, that's my left, Zachary Clark. And then we have Rohan. No. I'll put my glasses on here. Hold on a second. <laughs> we have, oh, Shazeb, Rohan, and Harshti, right? Okay. Uh, Zach, you, uh, you did Rubik's Cube competition for fun? Yeah, since like 2015, so when I was in sixth grade, I've competed on like a national level. I average around like eight seconds for the traditional three by three Rubik's Cube. And eight, eight seconds? Yeah. And then, and then COVID came along and you decided to get yeah, serious I, about school? Yeah, like physical competitions and person competitions sort of ended. So I've been doing mostly school work and I guess economics since then. What was the toughest question? It's probably the World Bank one. Uh, it's simply, it's trivia, and we... Well, wait a second. Now, you just did all this stuff about marginal utility and upwardly sloping curves and stuff, and the one about the World Bank and what it used to be called was the hardest one? Slightly. Yeah. The, was the rest pretty easy? Um, I wouldn't say easy, per se. Everything you had to think about, ultimately, it was uh, as a result of our preparation. Right. You know, just trying to figure out what kind of questions will be asked and preparing different terms, um, logic, to you know, solve them really quickly. Favorite economist? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Adam Smith, you know? Why? <laughs> I think he just kind of kick-started the whole shebang, and, you know, everyone, I think, owes a lot of credit to him. Um, even though, of course, like, his theories have all been refined, refuted against, etc. But I think that he sort of got the conversation going, and that's very admirable. Right on. Okay. Advice for Powell. Did he screw up, you think? Well, he's doing the right thing now, right? Raising the rates. What about before? Um, That's okay. You can talk. Just be me and you. <laughs> what do you think? Um, you won't get, you, you just do a job at the Fed. Don't worry about it. He might have, he might wanted to have like, started raising the rates a little bit earlier. And know. what about QE? Did he keep around QE too long? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, that's why we have this inflation, like 8% rate. Yeah. 8.3? Yeah. It's pretty bad. You think uh, guys in Congress ought to learn some of this stuff that you guys do? Yes. <laughs> Why? I think that a lot of policies um, should sort of take greater account of the concrete results of those actions rather than just the political implications of those actions. Awesome answer. What about some investing advice for people at home? 363 rule. If you don't know it, look it up. Nice. <laughs> Zach, how about you? Um, I guess diversify your portfolio. Um, yeah, that's all. That's all I'm really say. That's it? That's all it takes to diversify your portfolio? We go 15 hours a day on CNBC, and that's all we need? Yep. <laughs> that's it. All right. Now, uh, uh, Tyler, are you there, Tyler? Because I want to read you one question here that came up. Are you ready, Tyler? I want to know what the 363 rule is at the, at the end, but right, I'll take three, any six, question three. you got. What is 363? Explain. All right, Explain. That, I don't remember it. <laughs> you don't remember it. Okay, but listen, Tyler, I got a question for you. I, I, and I'm going to give you the answer that one of our uh, uh, contestants gave here. What is the name for currency that fluctuates widely, is unconvertible into other currencies, and is expected to depreciate? Garbage. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that one, 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 one group said junk currency. Yeah. The correct answer is soft currency. Soft currency. But I want you currency. to know that one of the... Right. Soft currency is the right answer. I want you to know that one of the groups here answered... Cryptocurrency. <laughs> I, I, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. So, so these, soft currency. So these kids are... These kids are pretty smart, but they have a good sense of humor, too. And it was a real delight to have to be able to do this contest again and, and just see how incredibly hard these kids prepare uh, and then come and really perform in front of the cameras and the lights and all their, their friends and family. And uh, a great job by the Council of Economic Education, which obviously, Tyler, this is about fostering this education. Back That's to you. fantastic, Stephen. Congratulations to the, all the participants and especially the winning team sure. from out in California. Congratulations, uh, gentlemen. I think it would be really interesting, and Steve, you can get back to me on this, if the teenagers have some parenting advice about how to turn my kids into, into, into geniuses, yeah. too. <laughs> All right, Oppenheimer offering a refreshed <laughs> recession playbook. We'll trade. The Great job. Great work. Thank Terrific you. job. I'm sorry I mangled your name. Sorry about that. I knew I was going to blow that. It's like we got it in your head. Cool, guys.